earthquakes, tornadoes, asteroids, pterodactyls. Are you prepared for the next horror that Jason with a D will subject the Earth to? Oh, hello there! I'm Dr. Shamilton Bunk, and in today's world of terror and horror, wouldn't a little peace of mind be something that you'd be willing to pay for? Sure you would! After all, why spend the entire day worried that giant cockroaches may be spilling out of your chimney to steal your babies and eat your grandmas when you could be relaxing blissfully by the fire? Well, now you can with Bunk's personal relaxation bags. With a bunk bag, you can say no thanks to horror and hello to peace. Before I bought a bunk bag, I was always afraid that eldritch monsters would come out of the sky to carry away my family for torture and death and probably really icky sex things. Now, thanks to the peace of the stylish bunk bag, I don't worry about it anymore. You see, it works like this. You see something terrible and your eyes tell your brain and then your brain makes your butt poop its pants. The bunk bag prevents the eyes from seeing the terrible thing and the lower oxygen levels in the bag calm your brain meat resulting in a tranquil state and clean underpants. Uh, yeah, I'm totally a doctor in crap. And uh, I developed these bunk bags with the help of Professor Dr. whatever the hell he's calling himself, Bunk, to uh, help anybody feel better about uh, whatever it is that they were made for. You know, um, science words. I'm a motherfucking doctor. Hey man, I was promised a sandwich if I said something about body bags and stuff, so, um, yeah. Body bags are great, you know? Just drop like three drops of paint thinner in the bag and then huff away, man. Huff all those problems away. <sighs> okay, where's my tuna with whole wheat? So what are you waiting for? Order your bunk bag today in one of nine great colors and start ignoring your way to a more relaxing apocalypse. I mean you, a more relaxed you. Bunk Industries assumes no liability in the use of said product. Use of said product does not guarantee users' safety nor their ability to feel safe. Use of the bunk bag may result in lightheadedness, suffocation, paranoia, agitation, and loss of being alive. I told you it was a phenomenal idea. All I need is a little seed money to get it off the ground, and I can guarantee you gentlemen fourth quarter profit returns. Look at them. They're shocked. I told you the idea was so simple but so genius that they'd be flabbergasted. It's a bag you put over your head so you won't see the awful things that have been happening. No, no, no. It's an oculosensory deprivation tool. Deprivation sounds real negative, Shammy. You're right. How about Oculus Sensory Enhancement Tool? Perfect. It's a bag you put over your head so you won't see the awful things that have been happening. Yeah, and if you guys pony up a little do re me now, you'll be rolling in it by Christmas. Hey, holiday themed bunk bags. Does your family drive you crazy during the holidays? Don't wallow in your misery, bag it. Don't wallow in your misery, bag it. What a catchphrase. There isn't gonna be a holiday season because we'll all be dead by then. Find your chill, dude. Which one of you came up with this shit? I did. See, me and Bunk were both having lunch at Kamikaze Burger and I saw a guy start puking into a bag. You must have ordered the Bonsai Burger. It advertises itself as so good, your tongue will perform seppuku. Anyways, as I watched this guy hork into a bag, I turned to Bunk and I said, Too bad you can't put all of your fears and troubles into a bag like that. One sketch on a napkin and a hasty legal agreement later, and hey presto, Bunk Bags! Bags! For heads! Think of Tasha Yar. Guys, this is a little exploity. Exploity? Who are we exploiting? What are we exploiting? You're exploiting the fears of anybody on planet Earth right now who's freaking out about the constant attacks by the acting mayor! Bags! 
Um, is Jason gonna kill me? He might, or he may just stroke out. Why? I'm just trying to buy a little silver lining to this whole rotten area of awfulness that we found ourselves in. Because it's wrong, Fundy. Because it's wrong! Says who? We saw an opportunity to make a harmless profit, and we're gonna take it. It's a time-honored business tradition. Yeah, war profiteers, slave traders, and colonialists all lived by that credo. Not just them, all companies trade in fear. Fear sells. Always has, always will. No, I don't buy a certain brand of toothpaste out of fear. Yes, you do, Gary. Yes, you do. You're afraid that your breath will smell, or your teeth won't be white enough, or your teeth will fall out of your fucking skull. And worst of all, you're afraid that everybody will notice your rotten, stinky teeth situation. But that's not in the commercials. Not overtly, but it's there, playing your subconscious like a cheap guitar. And so now you two are using the fear of the end of the world to sell bags that you put over your heads. Sure are, following in the proud line of fear-mongering businesses from time immemorial. Well, religion has been using the fear angle for centuries. Better pray to God or you'll go straight to hell, where a ripped naked dude with horns and a bendy penis will poke you for all eternity in the beehive. A dude with a bendy penis. You mean Satan, right? Who else? Anyways, fear works so good that people don't even require proof of an afterlife or of hell or anything. Well, it's a good thing that you actually believe that those things exist, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. They all totally exist. But you're literally selling people willful ignorance in bag form. Which makes it just like every other product out there. Look, America is going through an obesity epidemic, but I don't see you getting all red-faced over Burger King running 900 commercials a day or McDonald's, or Safeway, or the hundreds of other fast food restaurants out there. The country's infrastructure is crap, Bri bridges are collapsing, highways are falling apart, and roads have potholes so big in them you can fish in a boat. But we're still selling cars to drive on them, aren't we? That's not the same thing. True, our product is less toxic than Burger King food, and less expensive than a car. Fundy, the earth is under attack. There are monsters destroying cities, and natural disasters, and burning, and screaming, and wailing, and gnashing of teeth and shit! Don't forget that Reverend Pone, Orf, Cartoon Avatar Jason, and the High Arbiter all escaped from prison last week! They could be anywhere... doing who knows what! Thanks for reminding me, AJ. The point is, is that you are wasting precious time and energy selling garbage! So what are you saying? You don't want to invest because you don't think it'll sell? No. I know it will sell. Fear works. Look, friend, if your conscience is troubling you, at least this product is exploiting a very real fear of pterodactyl attack and asteroid disasters. Um, he kind of has a point. I mean, the other products out on the market create a fear of something. Overweight and afraid of being unhealthy and alone? Skinny Flake cereal will save you. Does it? Who cares? Are you actually unhealthy? Who cares? Buy it. Exactly! At least bunk bags address a very real problem instead of making one up. Like you do with the rest of your products, right? I am under several legally binding disclosure agreements that prevent me from answering that question. I told you these guys were too stupid to invest. We should have gone to the retirement village first. Them old people scare easy and they throw their money around when they get panicky. What do you guys think? Can you name a product that hasn't used fear of one kind or another to get people to buy it? Is it ethically wrong to profit from other people's fears? And if so, why? And if you thought it was wrong, how would you stop advertisers from using fear to sell products to us? Comment down in the hellhole. I just can't believe that while the world burns, you two want to sell tickets. Or, um, the opposite of tickets. Uh, what you sell when people want to ignore something. I don't know, I'm so angry I can't metaphor right now. What? All the real bad stuff has been happening everywhere else. Nothing really bad other than the prison break has happened in Opinionville. Yeah. Weird, huh? Weird how? Well, you'd think that being the acting mayor of Opinionville and hating us as much as he does, that we would be totally destroyed like 19 times over. But it seems like he's just destroying everything else around us. Maybe he's saving us for last, like dessert! Well, yay for us!
spin the globe again. Come on, Opinionville. Come on, Opinionville. Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh, God damn it. Oh, hey, you bunch of jokes, it's me, Vermont, and today is Saturday, July 22nd, 2017, and it's Casual Pie Day, Fragile X Awareness Day, National Day of the Cowboy, National Panoosh Fudge Day, Rat Catchers Day, and Spoonerism Day. Famous dead jokes and fictional characters celebrating their birthday today are... Guy who said things wrong, William Archibald Spooner, and some anime girl to Sequio Kuyo Joji Jojo. And now on to your stupid questions, first up. Dueling Shade asks, intimate question for Vermont. Why are you so against having a catchphrase? Do you have some kind of moral objection to them? Are you just unable to come up with one? By the way, do you know anyone who sells stolen car parts? I had to stop for gas in Opinionville, and when I went to the station to pay, it seems someone stole my radio, and I'm trying to track them down. Heh, <laughs> good luck with that. But, uh, by a happy coincidence, I happen to have a spare car radio that's just lying around my garage, and I'll let you have that for real cheap. Why, I even bet it's the same exact brand that was stolen out of your car. By even more of an outrageous coinkydink, I bet it's tuned to your favorite station already, and it has a CD in, it, CD in it that you already like. Small oil. Robin Goodfellow asks, intimate question for Mabel. I hear that certain unsavory individuals have been staring at your cleavage. Would you, would my services in making that more difficult for them be of interest to you? No, that won't be needed. My granny told me how to deal with cleavage monkeys. With a shotgun. Granny actually fixed a lot of problems with a shotgun. If the big biscuits didn't turn out right, shotgun. If the uh, washing machine didn't get all the stains out of the clothes, shotgun. If you forgot to say please and thank you, shotgun. My granny went to jail. A lot. Lou Pliskin asks, if Jason with a D is so evil, why is he doing so many good things? Like letting those slaves out of that U.S. slave prison and protecting the moon from evil corporations like Pepsi that want to turn it into a giant space billboard. It just goes to show you, Lou, one man's destructive lunatic is another man's hero. Me, personally, I like a little rompy stompy. It creates a fiscal opportunity not uh, available normally when things are all calm and boring. I mean, yesterday I sold a regular old to uh, roll of toilet paper online as bandages to some dude running an emergency clinic in Korea. Price of toilet paper? 99 cents. Amount charged on eBay? 500 bucks. The rest is all profit, baby. Profit right there in my little pocket. So that's it this time around. Remember, if you've got a stupid question you want to ask intimate questions, leave it down below in the comment section. Until next time, my beautiful little jokes, this has been Vermont. Start the next segment. Oh, howdy y'all, I'm Mabel, and here are some of y'all's responses to the episode, One Man's Treasure. Brian Axness says, I went to my first protest this year about a certain president not releasing his tax returns. It did feel good to be doing something, although I didn't think one protest would change much. Protests were a big part of the civil rights movements in the 1950s and 60s because they were sustained for many, several years. I'm not sure how to include a joke with this comment, so Mabel, maybe you can come up with something. Oh sure, just leave the funny part to me. Did you really just reference the civil rights movement and then expect me, a southern girl, to come up with a joke for it? Alright, alright, let me think. Knock knock. Who's there? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks who? Fuck you, Brian Axness. What? It was a joke? Fuck. New channel layout. I did a double take when I thought it was the Bible Reloaded and Opinionville crossover. 
All them fellows over at the Bible Reloaded have gotten a bit too big in their britches for a crossover with the likes of us. Nope, they're on their way to YouTube stardom. Followed by YouTube infamy, YouTube struggling to keep an audience, followed by YouTube pandering, then YouTube obscurity. Ahab the plant said, The last time I was at a protest, the protest was against somebody invading somebody else, and I was terrified throughout the whole thing. I had a demented parent, a cat, and a puppy to worry about. If I'd gotten arrested, I would have lost my job, my house, and all my critters. My mom would get put in a nursing home, and I'd feel guilty forever for putting the staff through that horror. Only protest if you have nothing to lose. That's what my grandpa used to say. It's how we knew he was in trouble when he was arrested outside the Piggly Wiggly because they wouldn't let him use his food stamps to buy household chemicals and over-the-counter medications to cook meth. Poor old stupid methed out grandpa. So that's it this time around. If you have a reaction to this week's episode, please leave it down below in the comments section. Until next time, y'all, Mabel says, y'all's fucked up. Hey everybody, it's me, Oswald, and me and my buddy Nameframe are going to shout out some Patreon peeps. The last of the Patreon peeps? What do you mean? We've run out of Patreon peeps to shout out. These two are the last until we get some new supporters. Oh. Well, can we just shout them out again? Um, that would be kind of repetitive, repetitive wouldn't it? Then you was going to have to get us some more. I can't force people to donate to our Patreon. I can. How? I'm gonna go on a hunger strike. I'm not gonna eat until somebody becomes a Patreon dude or dudette. Or until I die. Whichever one comes first. You. Yes. A hunger strike. Yes. Okay. Jamie Moore. I'm gonna say it. Please don't. But she is the prettiest ever. She's gotta be my girlfriend! Of all the women you have asked to be your girlfriend during the shout-out section, how many have said yes? In real life or in my head? In real life. Shut up. Huge nut! Hey, name frame? What? What's the deal with huge nut? What do you mean? Is that his real name, huge nut? Or is that what he is like? You know, is he like actually a huge nut? I think that's how he describes himself. Oh, so like what kind of nut? A coconut? A peanut? A cola nut? A corn nut? Peanuts and corn nuts aren't nuts. Peanuts and corn nuts aren't... Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? I'm thinking about food now. And here you are on a hunger strike. I really want to eat some nuts now. Well, you better hope somebody becomes a Patreon patron soon. Does the hunger strike have to be the kind where you don't eat? Yes, it's in the name. Well, what about a strike where you don't stop eating? What, like a gluttony strike? I don't know what that word means, but I'm not going to stop eating until we get a new Patreon patron. Now somebody deliver me a dump truck full of smoked almonds now! I'm just saying that three times a day seems a little excessive. I mean, he is my nephew, and I want him to be healthy, but he's gonna run out of fluid if he keeps... Oh, hello! Trudeau here with even more of your suggestions. Desolate Hound says, instead of watching Jason with a D's slow descent into felt hell, I could have been repressing my rage at this claim that Oswald is the most popular. Don't you lie to me! You're telling me Gary isn't the most popular sexy pus puppet beast there is in Opinionville? I don't believe it! I won't believe it! Sorry, DH, but with the fans of the show, Oswald is the reigning fan favorite since his debut. Sure, if something happened to Gary, there would be those that would miss him, but if anything happened to Oswald, the fans would probably burn YouTube to the ground. Good thing he's practically indestructible. Unlike Gary. Sexy yet terribly f vulnerable Gary. Sure do hope nothing happens to him. El Nerdo Loco says, Suggestion! To beat a god, you need a god. And the only god in your town is a god of gaming. So, 
Ever see that movie Toys? Set up an arcade machine to pilot heavily armed drones, plop a Hot Pocket and an energy drink next to it, find the evil mayor, and let Trudeau do what he does best. Who could survive that? Well, being compared to a video game god is always flattering. But I think I can say this with confidence, El Nerdo. You were the only person to ever see the movie Toys. Blackie Comics suggests, instead of watching the world in crisis, I could have attempted to 100% crash Bandicoot 1. It wouldn't be so hard if it wasn't for those fucking bridge levels. Now, Blackie, a poor gamer blames the game. 100% is possible even with those infuriating bridge levels. You just need to get into the gaming zen space of the road to nowhere or the high road. You've got to think like the game developers. How do you do that? Well, just drink up about three gallons of some caffeine-filled sugar beverage, eat about 19 pounds of convenience store pizza-shaped cheese sandwich products, and you will have a mind like a naughty dog developer mid-1990s. I mean, if you survive the heart attack. Hey everybody, it's me, everybody's secret boyfriend, Oswald. And I'm here once again to tell you to listen to a podcast, and the podcast that I want you to listen to is this one. Let me finish with Jason Anonymous. And uh, it's a podcast and it's funny, and you should go to the link down below and click on them and then go listen to it. You're probably asking yourself, hey, Oswald, what's a podcast? Uh, to which I will reply, I don't really know. I really don't. It's not like the radio. I mean, in the radio, you can turn on the radio and you can walk down the street going, bump, 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 bump. You're listening to W, blah, 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 blah. And you're listening to the Funk Hour. This one goes out to Oswald, who's the cutest guy in the world. And it's Count Funkenstein in Funktacular Castle. And then I would be like, thanks, man. Thanks for playing my request. Bump, 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 bump. But that's not what this is. This is a podcast where you have to go onto your computer thingy and click thing, and then you can download it into your iTunes jukebox that you wear on your face, or you could, uh, well, put it into a tiny machine that plays it in your ear holes, or you could just listen to it on the computer. That's not a radio to me. A lot of people reference the radio when they're talking about podcasts, and I don't see it being like a radio. But, uh, yeah, go listen to it. It's good. And, uh, Jason gives me candy for doing these. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye, everybody.